My name is Katherine Trickett. I'm a Red Sail Journeyman Carpenter and an instructor at the College of Carpenters. I'm sitting in a Caterpillar TL943. This machine weighs approximately 27,000 pounds, can lift 9,000 pounds, and has a reach of 43 feet. Without a doubt, the all-terrain forklift is an extremely valuable asset on a construction job site. But just as important is having a trained, competent person to operate the machine productively and safely. Part of becoming a competent operator is understanding the capacities of the machine you'll be operating. Familiarization with the specific machine you're operating is paramount. Always follow manufacturer's instructions and best practices. It's everything. Knowing the weight of the load you're intending to lift, as well as the corresponding load charts, is vital to safe and productive operations. In this tutorial, we review calculating loads, reading load charts, and determining whether a load is safe given different job site scenarios. This machine is a very large and powerful construction tool. The operator must have knowledge, training, and experience to run this equipment. Understanding the math involved and interpreting the load charts will help you with your upcoming course and on a job site. Before we start, I want to thank you for your dedication to training. With your efforts, Local 27 and the UBC will remain strong and competitive. So let's get started. Introduction to load charts and calculations. Part of becoming a competent operator is understanding the capacities of the machine you're operating. The most important thing an operator must know is the weight of the load itself. The next thing an operator must know is the height and reach the load is gonna be picked and placed at. In this lesson, we'll explore different ways the weight of the load can be calculated. We'll look at how the capacity of the machine changes with the height, reach, and angle that the load must be picked or placed. There are many ways that the weight of the load can be calculated. The best way to calculate the load is by weighing it on a scale. Sometimes the weight can be found on the bill of lading or on the shipping information. Other times it can be stamped on the load itself. Sometimes these options aren't available, so the operator has to figure out the weight of their load on their own. In this first example, the operator must move 40 sheets of 4x8 form ply to the third level of a scaffold. The scaffold is approximately 24 feet high, and due to obstructions, the machine is approximately 20 feet from the scaffold. As always, the most important thing to first establish is the weight of the load. In this first example, I have 40 sheets of plywood, with the weight of each piece of plywood being approximately 68 pounds. To do this calculation, I'm going to take the 68 pounds and multiply it by the amount of sheets that I have. So we're going to do it together with our calculators. Take your 40 sheets, and we're going to times it by the weight of one piece of plywood. So one piece of plywood is 68 pounds, and we're going to multiply those together, 40 times 68, and we're going to get a total of 2,700 and 20 pounds for our load. Now that we know the weight of the load, 2,720 pounds, we can move on to our load charts to see if this is going to be a safe load to lift. You'll notice that we have two load charts here. We have one with our outriggers up and one with our outriggers down. In our scenario, we're going to be working with our outriggers down. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using those numbers that we said before. We're going to be looking that it goes 20 feet worth of reach and we're going to be lurking, looking that we go 24 feet high. So all we're going to be doing is going across both of those measurements to see that we fall within a safe working load. You'll see that the, in that safe working load, we can lift up to 4,000 pounds, well within the capacity to do this lift. In this next example, we need to lift a skid of 2 by 4 spruce. We're going to multiply 16 by 4 by 2.5 to figure out the total volume of this load. So go ahead and pull your calculators out and do the calculation with me. 16 times 4 times 2.5. And we come up with a total of 160 cubic feet. Now we're going to refer to our rigger's pocket guide to find out that the weight of our wet softwood is 50 pounds per cubic foot. Now I'm going to take my 160 cubic feet and multiply it by my 50 pounds to get my total load. Let's do the calculation together. 160, multiply by 50, and that's going to give me the weight of my total load. Let's do it together. 160 times 50 gives me a total of 8,000 pounds. 
We're going to take that 8,000 pounds and we're going to look at our charts now to see if we can lift this. Now that we know the weight of the load, we can determine if the lift is within the capacity of the machine and if this is safe. A simple way to determine the height and reach of the lift is to do a dry run. By placing the forks approximately where the load needs to go or be picked, the operator can look at the load angle indicator on the boom and the corresponding letter on the boom. Knowing this and referring to the load chart will determine whether this is a safe lift. The angle indicator reads 45 degrees and the corresponding letter on the boom was C. Now we're going to go over to our load charts and see if this is going to be a safe lift. Remember we have one load chart that has our outriggers lifted and one load chart where our outriggers are down. In this example we can have our outriggers down. So then we're going to look where our C goes and our 45 degrees and we're going to use those two together to see that we can lift about 7,000 pounds. Is this going to be a safe load? Lifting upwards of 8,000 pounds, this will not be a safe load. So we're going to move on to a next example. In our next example, a foreman is asking us to lift a skid of bricks onto the third floor of a building that's under renovation. He tells us that a brick weighs approximately 5 pounds. To figure out how many bricks we have, we're going to do length times width times height. So we know that it is 9 rows by 10 rows by 6 rows high. We're going to multiply these numbers together. 9 times 10 times 6 to get our total of 540 bricks. Now we need to calculate our total load. We're told that each brick weighs 5 pounds and now we know that we have 540 bricks so we can multiply those two numbers together to get our total load. 540 bricks times 5 pounds per brick and this will give us our total load. Here we go. 2,700 pounds. Now the foreman for this construction company has told us that we can't mark up the finished floor. That means that we can't use the outriggers. So when we go to our charts, we're not going to be using the chart that has our outriggers down. We're going to be looking at the chart that has our outriggers up. We're going to do a dry run on this and figure out that when we bring our machine over, we're going to read 30 on our angle indicator and we're reading the letter F. That tells us that we can lift 2,300 pounds in this range. Does that mean this is a safe load? If we're lifting 2,700 pounds, this is not a safe load and we cannot do this lift. At times it may be necessary to make a lift that exceeds the 24 inch load center on most machines. The load center is measured from the backrest 24 inches along the forks. Most, but not all, all-terrain forklifts are based on a 24 inch load chart. For this lift, we're asked to move a 60 by 60 inch skid with an electric motor to the first floor. Because of the ceiling height, we can only lift the load 4 feet off the ground and the load will need to be placed 26 feet into the building. We're able to bring the machine right up to the edge of the building, but we're not able to use the outriggers. And the skid has a weight stamp of 2,200 pounds. In this scenario, we need to make a field calculation because the load center exceeds the 24 inch centers. How we know that is we're looking at our, 30 in our 60 inch by 60 inch and seeing now that our load center will be 30 inches. Increasing the load center always reduces the capacity of the load chart. We know from our load chart that at a 4 foot height and a 26 foot reach that we have a capacity of 2300 pounds. However, again, we need to take into account our new load center. We're going to have to recalculate our 2300 pounds to see if we can lift our 2200 pounds with our new load center. So, Let's take our 2300, multiplying by 24 load center, divide by our 30 inch new load center to get a total of 1840 pounds. So we look at our chart and see, can we make that reach? No, because we have 2200 pounds. It's telling us so that we can't do that reach. Let's try the calculation now in the second area. Let's do it with 4,000 pounds. 
4,000 pounds times our 24 inch load center divided by our 30 inch load center tells us that we can lift 3,200 pounds. That shows us that we can safely lift up to 23 feet are 3,200 pounds. So we can do our 2,200 pounds up to 23 feet. This tells us then that that's where our limit's going to be for this load. We then need to go back to the foreman and tell him we can't do the full reach of 26 feet and that we could only drop it at 23 feet. Then we would have to tell him that he would have to make alternative arrangements. Once again, these are field calculations. These should never supersede load charts or manufacturer's recommendations. In this last job site scenario, we're asked to move a 7,000 pound load on a 48 by 48 inch skid. We know that we're at a 24 inch load center. We also know that the capacity for the machine is 9,000 pounds. However, we inquire and find out that the new concrete floor is rated for 10,000 pounds. Can we make this lift happen? Before we say yes, we need to remember that the all-terrain forklift is counterbalanced. This is usually a 3 to 1 ratio. Therefore, if the load capacity is 9,000 pounds, the machine itself is going to weigh 27,000 pounds. Adding the 7,000 pounds from our load to our machine weight is going to have a combined weight now of 34,000 pounds. Is it now safe to drive on that concrete floor? In this scenario, we know that we can place our 7,000 pound load on the floor, but we cannot be driving our all-terrain forklift on it. Thank you for participating in this tutorial. The objective of this tutorial was to introduce you to the math you'll be applying in your upcoming course. Familiarization with calculating the weight of a load, load charts, load centers, and job site challenges should now become easier. Finally, I want to thank you for your participation in this tutorial and your commitment to training. It's your commitment to hard work that makes Local 27 and the UBC competitive and increases our market share. Enjoy your upcoming course. And remember, it's up to you to operate this amazing piece of equipment safely. Stay safe.